Hello guys, what is going on? I am Nozda and welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be reviewing Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. So just to start off with, this review video will be done in two parts, a no spoiler section and a spoiler section. So if you do like what I have to say about the book and then don't want the story spoiled for you if you haven't already read the book, then please click away once I say we get into the spoiler section of the video. Just to do a bit of uh, administrative work. The page count, not including acknowledgements, is 358 pages. It took me around six days to read the book. And just to quickly mention, I have a slight bias towards the author because she's my favorite author of all time before going in to read this book. I will now take a tiny bit of time to read you the blurb. Centuries after the last humans left Earth, the Exodian fleet is a living relic, a place many are from but few outsiders have seen. Humanity has finally been accepted into the galactic community, but while this has opened doors for many, those who have not yet left for alien cities fear that their carefully cultivated way of life is under threat. Tessa chose to stay at home when her brother Ashby left for the stars, but is forced to question that decision when her position in the fleet is threatened. Kip, a reluctant young apprentice, itches for the change but doesn't know where to find it. Sawyer, a lost and lonely newcomer, is just looking for a place to belong. And when a disaster rocks this already fragile community, those Exodians who still call the fleet their home can no longer avoid the inescapable question. What is the purpose of a ship that has reached its destination? Now this book is the third instalment in the Wayfarers series, but I would like to stress that these three novels are all companion novels to each other. So you don't need any prior knowledge when going into these books, but do know you run the risk of getting other stories spoiled for you if you read them out of order. Now to get on to my actual opinions without spoiling the story for you. Becky Chambers is a master of perspective. There are a range of characters you will meet in this book. There are a few perspective characters in which you get chapters that are dedicated to their perspective and the way they see the Exodius fleet. You have newcomers, kids feeling scared and feeling safe. You have teenagers, outsiders and lifetime insiders. Now don't go in this expecting for these characters to meet and interact all the time. There are very few occasions which they are seen together in the same scene, and when they are, it's not earth-breaking or even related to the story. All of them have their own story, whilst the plot around them evolves, and they all get affected by the plot, but they do continue their own stories. My favourite characters were Sawyer, Aya, and Ayas. Now maybe pronouncing Ayas wrong, it might be Eas, I'm not too sure, it's spelled E-Y-A-S. Now just to give a primitive rating, I would say that it is not quite as good as the second Wayfarer's novel, which I gave a perfect score, but I would say it was around a 9.5 out of 10. Now we are going to swiftly move from the non-spoilery review to the spoilery review. So yeah, click away now if you don't want to get spoiled. So if people have stuck by, then usually that means that they have read the book. And therefore, what I'm going to talk about first is probably something that they are really excited to hear people's reactions on. Oh my god, Sawyer's death. It was so sudden, but... The suddenness is only a tiny piece of what made that death so prominent and so gut-wrenching and soul-shredding. I would struggle to find someone who didn't like Sawyer. Maybe they didn't like him because he was ignorant or because they shared the Exodius fleet's people's views on outsiders and just their ignorance towards their ways. You cannot argue that scientifically, Becky Chambers has created one of the most relatable characters that you have ever read. This is simply down to one raw emotion, one raw need that everyone has, and that is to be accepted, to be liked by people. That is what society is built on. You need to work together and be a social group and everyone has the need to be liked. The main element of his character, whether it was a flaw or not, I don't know what your perspective is on it, but his main point of him being in the whole story was that he wanted to belong somewhere and to do that he needed 
people to like him. And that got him killed. Not only that, not only is he relatable to that, but he's also such a lovable character. Because even with that forceful emotion driving his every move, he still stopped and put into question what he was doing in order to accomplish this. And then he died. And that was so perfectly crafted. Now, Eas, I'm just going to call it Eas, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Um, was a very good perspective to have on the o Otsumoko um, incident, but that was not what made that incident so powerful for me. That was Aya. This is because it's echoed throughout from a bunch of different characters like Kip as well. They feel trapped in this place, but it's different between Aya and Kip. Because Kip's trapped because he's got nothing to do, he feels like his life's going nowhere, and he just wants to leave, he's just being a teenager. Aya is trapped in a constant waking nightmare. She is constantly scared, fearing the outside getting inside. And when she's surrounded by walls that are doing just that, and when she has seen it fail in the past... You just, you feel for her because she's constantly trapped in this nightmare. That, w that was just cruel writing. <laughs> Honestly, it was cruel to do that to a character. And this wasn't just a huge toll on Aya. It was also a huge toll on Tessa because Tessa couldn't do anything about it. She couldn't stop this from happening. And that eventually drove her character to doing something that she never thought she would do just to protect her child from this constant fear. And this also worked really well. Because, like the Wayfarer's Way, there is no villain, there is no sinister plot from this like benevolent god. I think he used the word bene benevolent wrong there. I think that's supposed to mean merciful. No. Um, you know what I mean, like this god-type character or this evil snake or whatever. There was no character like that. And they, they could have so easily been, there could have easily been this plot set up for like, oh, the Hatsumoko actually didn't suffer these problems and then it, was, it wasn't it was like a, an accident that happened. It was actually this evil person who wanted to terrorize the Exodius fleet or it was scavengers who wanted to blow up the fleet in order to get parts. They could have so easily didn't, done that, but because they didn't do that, it made Aya's fear so much worse because she couldn't blame people she could only blame her surroundings. And because she's trapped in her surroundings, there was no escape from that. And that was what made it even more powerful. And finally, just a little thing I noted, just about the scenario and the story in general, the conversation between Isabel and Kip at the end really just drove home what the Exodus fleet is all about. Everyone's the same. This is like super old woman just having a casual conversation with like a 16 year old, like it's nothing. And like people probably wouldn't stare or anything like that, even though even, even though kids do hang around with kids and stuff like that. If, you know, everyone is the same. Everyone's treated equally, no matter what job you got, you live in the same house. And I just thought that was a nice touch at the end. Other than that, I don't really have any other particular points to talk about. I was very satisfied with how all the characters ended up because at the end of the book we did get to see oh where are they now and stuff like that and that was very interesting. I would like to see these characters again in a different book. Maybe we could get a book focusing on them. Like the, A Small and Common Orbit was very, very focused on Lovelace um, and, her, and her character as well as Jade. So that was... I, I, I would like a novel like that with these characters. I don't think we're going to get it I don't know what's coming next from Becky Chambers. Hopefully something, and hopefully something within the next year or two, because I can't wait for another Wayfarers novel. Anyway, so that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you did like this video, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. I have a playlist of all my book reviews. I haven't done one in a while, mainly because I haven't been reading fiction in a while. I've just been reading non-fiction. I don't feel like reviewing that on this channel. Um, but I'm going to be reviewing a lot more fiction coming up. I'm close to finishing a couple of books now because I'm a freak and I read a bunch of books at once. Um, so get ready for that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye. If you have made it this far through the video, then maybe you would appreciate knowing that if you head into the description below and click on the first link, you will be taken to my Patreon page. In there, you can read the first chapter of my brand new novel called Project Old World, 
If you become a reader, which is one dollar per month, you will get access to all finished writing every single month, meaning that you will get brand new chapters every single month for just one dollar. Like I said, you can read the first chapter for free to see if you think the novel is for you or not, and if it is, I would really appreciate the donation. Thank you very much, and goodbye.